Hey everybody, this is Birch. Uh, let's get to this mail. This is, I think, the last one I'm reading. Uh, this, I this this mail feels like it's a bot, or at least ChatGPT inspired. It, it definitely has an approach to it. But let's uh, let's go to it. But it's a challenging mail, so let's get to it. I don't know why people pick the things they do to challenge me on. It's very very odd. Also, I don't know why people who are complete ass clowns create sock butts with themselves to come on to the comments of my videos saying. Hey, you should be nice to that other guy when it's clearly that this account was created roughly one week ago and follows only one channel. I'm like, come on, come on, people. Anyway, hello, Perch, says the mail. How are you? Me, I got a lot of my mind. Well, sure. I saw your video on Philip Kennedy Johnson's Hell Hunters with a comic focusing on the Ghost Rider, Sergeant Sal Romero. As a Ghost Rider fan myself, I have to admit there is too many Ghost Riders. There are too many Ghost Riders. Are, there are too many Ghost Riders. Grammar. Anyway, um, and of course, there's too many ghost writers. There's too many of everything. We've watered it down. I absolutely agree. We've watered it down. Now, that said, I think ghost writer is at least one of those instances where the spirit of the character, the history of the character, how the character comes to be, the spirit of vengeance, etc., does lend itself to other ghost writers throughout history. That, that actually does check out based on the character itself, based on the writing of the character. I think it's very different to have, you know, that. But even even still, even despite that built-in excuse, there's too many ghostwriters, for sure. It, it's all watered down. Absolutely. Anyway, back to the mail. It says, I thought to myself, why can't Philip Kennedy Johnson bring back Mark Todd, a.k.a. Blazing Skull, a character who actually exists in the 40s. Blazing Skull had fought alongside the invaders during World War II. Yeah, but the character isn't popular. Sorry. I mean, do, do you want the answer? That's the answer. Nobody knows that character exists. Um, I do not know if the character has fallen into the public domain. That may also be a factor. Probably not, but could be. Um, but in general, nobody knows who that character is. And these are big two tentpole companies that try and leverage the success of IP that people know and then milk it to absolute death. And that's what they do. So that's why. With all due respect, back to the mail, with all due respect to uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson, why retcon a Ghost Rider into World War II while Marvel already has Blazing Skull? Philip PKJ doesn't need to make Blazing Skull into a Ghost Rider, but if he needs to use a Ghost Rider for supernatural horror elements, he could just make the Skull Men race have a connection to the Spirit of Vengeance. Yeah, I guess. Maybe Ghost Rider uh, because BC. Maybe Ghost Rider BC taught cavemen to demonic mystic arts that create the skull men the skull me this is why i think this is chat gbt it's written like like a lunatic okay i'm i'm i really always appreciate people writing in but god damn it copy edit please please for the love of god especially if you're gonna like take shots at me later in the mail which is coming up here in a minute but like copy edit copy edit yes you could you you know i, I guess bill katie johnson could invest some time into blazing skull to say that actually that was a ghost writer you know based character or that it was all connected there. That's an option. You could absolutely do that. Again, I don't know where the rights sit with Blazing Skull. Um, I would think, uh, you know, Marvel every now and then tries to tap into the invaders, but they do stuff with Dynamite and others. I don't think the rights all sit with Marvel. I'm sure this answer is probably findable, and if I wasn't driving, I would find it. But, you know, in general, yeah, that, that the Ghost Rider's more popular character, you could certainly try and merge the two together, but if you don't wholly own the rights to the character, then that gets to be a problem. But that's just it. Anyway, this kind of proved my point. Well, how? How? How in the fucking world? When it comes to original characters, most normie, including you, don't care about. Why I say including you? Young Avenger. That all I have to say. You must know that Young Avenger is gonna in MCU. That's why is cheating. I read it exactly as it was typed there. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. I, I literally do not know. Um, I use the Young Avengers a lot in examples and videos for a couple reasons. One, it's relatively new, so most of the people who are newer to comics recognize them. Two, they are becoming more mainstream. Three, uh, Marvel has uh, desperately tried to get new characters over decade over decade over a decade. In the last, I don't know, 15 years or so, they've really tried to get a lot of new characters over. They seem to lose interest. They introduce a new character and then kind of abandon it very, very quickly. I think the Young Avengers is an illustrative point of this, which includes the new characters themselves, new social situations, new dating situations, all kinds of things they tend to ignore over time. 
Anyway, um, back to the mail. It says, uh, there are comic characters that are more obscure than Young Avengers. Yeah, no shit. I wouldn't never call Young Avengers obscure. They have Avengers in their name. Birch must have more knowledge than those fake comic fans. What? I, okay, I, look. The, the, the point of the Young Avengers, and we're way off track here, but it, it fits with Ghost Rider and everything else, is you're looking for brand recognition. Really fast brand recognition in order to sell comics, an increasingly desperate scenario. A place where a lot of comics are not sold on the newsstand, where people are not going into comic shops, and where every second counts in order to get these characters over. And that's what they're trying to do. Simultaneously, they're trying to encourage new readers that, hey, comics aren't scary, come on in. You can appreciate them, and the easiest way to do that is to cheat by saying, hey, you like Spider-Man, here's another Spider-Man. And another Avengers, and another... You know, and another that. That's that's what it is. That's that's how they get it done. But that's that's kind of the name of the game. These are big mainstream comic book companies putting out big mainstream comics. That's what they're trying to do. They're not trying to... You know, they're trying to balance continuity, which can be a benefit or a curse, depending on how you handle it. And... You know, I put two and two together. That's it, it, all of this is a money game. That's the entire point. Now, Young Avengers is a good example because they invested into it, got a you know pretty hot artist and a hot writer on it, got some initial popularity, and then seemed to go, ah, fuck it. Now let's get some new characters in here. Ignored them, and then every once in a while go back to that well for no apparent reason. Hey, where's Speed these days? See you around. anybody anybody, anybody see Speed? Isaiah Bradley. See. You see, where, where's he at? And they're good examples because these aren't characters from the 40s or the 60s or, you know, ye olden past. They're, they're relatively new, and yet this is still happening. That's shocking. That's, that's the point. I can pull any number of obscure characters out of the woodwork. Where's Cloud doing these days? Actually, Cloud recently showed up in that Doctor Strange uh, New Defenders thing, didn't he? She, them, they, I don't know. All right, when it comes to existing original characters, most current writers don't want to elevate. No elevate Simon Dark. Not no brought back Amy Allen, A.K. Bombshell. No one bring back Sodom Yat. No one bring back the cast from Avengers Initiative. Those are all different eras. And sure, I agree with you. It's a problem. Now keep in mind, again, some of these characters don't necessarily belong to the companies anymore that they're working for, which is a problem. But there's one other factor as well, and we're going to be really blunt about it. Comic creators, and this is only somewhat true, uh, don't always get royalties when they utilize an existing character. But when they create new IP, they're at least increasing the chance that they might get a check down the road for something other than a comic. Is that pathetic? Yeah, that's the business. These characters get forgotten, no matter how good they is written. I think I don't need to say I'm back to the mail. You guys understand. Hopefully the contextual difference. And when it comes to fans, they rather complain about make new characters without any popular demand of bring characters. They don't like race swapping characters and say make new characters, but they never talk about bling, Monet, and gentle existing characters who are black. Okay. I, sure. They would, they would, they would, they must have good stories, but when those original characters have good story, no talks or any buzz. This is why there are so many spiders, venoms, ghost riders, bat families, flash families. The big two knows you will mindlessly consume characters if they have any ties to older characters. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that. Yes, that's right. Correct. Who you even, who even you read Bloodline if she wasn't Blade's daughter? Well, you know, Guess what? They didn't rate it because she was Blade's daughter either. I know it won't, and I hate that comic. Danny Lore's bloodline is terrible. Tim Seeley should write. Really? I don't know. I, <laughs> it's just, it, is, uh, it has been this many days since somebody said to me, you know, it would uh, make a comic that didn't sell well sell better. Tim Seeley. I know knock against Tim Seeley, but come on. Even I've, I've talked to Tim Seeley before. At cons, even he would appreciate that joke. All right. Even Duke Thomas got sidelined by Jace Fox. No ask for Jace Fox. Why DC continues to neglect it, Duke Thomas? Why, well, I mean, they're neglecting Jace Fox too. Where's Jace Fox these days? Anyway, I believe the all-new Venom 
is either Luke Cage or Victor Alvarez. Victor Alvarez quit being Power Man in Incredible Hulk issue five's backup story by Vita Ayala. And I am, and if I'm right about Victor becoming Venom, Jim Zub should sue Marvel. I never forget that Marvel screwed Jim Zub's Thunderbolts in favoritism, Jackson and Kelly, those incompetent writers. All right, I don't understand that sentence either, but I, I feel like I agree. In general, no, Owen care about Victor Alvarez despite how hard Jim Zub tries to give him good story in both Champions and Thunderbolts. Audience is just all talk, no commitment. This is my frustration. When it comes to older characters like Peter Parker, Fantastic Four, Wolverine, you rather see them progress while all the characters that created either in late 90s or created before Miles Morales existed, you don't care. Like which X-Men character from... Nunzio de Filippis and Christina Weir that you care about? I guess none, because they are not as popular as X-23. Though Surge is getting some recognition finally. That's the end of the mail. It just It ends with a Surge getting recognition. The end. Okay. Look, I, I, I'm not, again, I don't know what the point of all that was. Um, if it's that fans tend to say they want things and then don't buy the things that they say they want, yeah, that is kind of annoying, I guess. Is it that characters, um, you know, we really should utilize, you know, original IP or new IP, you know, or existing IP before jumping into new IP? Sure. Is there plenty of IP out there? Sure. The majority of the Marvel and DC universe are like forgotten toys. There's thousands of them out there. I mean, hell, you didn't do this, but I'll give you a good one. Why is it that you have, and I've used this before, Obsidian out there, gay character, Gay character has been around since the 70s, at least the 80s, but I think the 70s. Eh, my memory may be going on me, but I believe the 70s. Um, and yet, you know, what, what, what are we going to do with that character? Abso-fucking-lutely nothing. Even though you have a gay character who has, I mean, a, for, for decades, a gay character. But like, you know what we need to do? We need to do something stunning and brave. Let's get a, let's get a new character, right now gay. Or or save that character from the ashes and do something with him. He's he's right there. I anyway. You, there's 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 endless examples like this. Endless when a character's gay or black, or or just new, just a new character that you want to do something with. Tons of examples, and it is aggravating that the comic companies don't do it more with it. But also, they are a corporation who are designed to you know make money. And they often don't like to put out a lot of effort to make that money. And what's a very low effort way to make money? Take existing brands, grab that shovel, and just dig until you hit concrete. Well, concrete, bedrock, whatever. Mind that. Mind those hills. I, I've, I've completely lost the plot with analogies here. The, the point is, yeah. Does it suck to have the 800 variation of Batman or the Flash? Yes. Is it stupid? Yes. Do people typically like those and don't like the other stuff? Yes. Does that suck? Yes. What can we do about it? I, I don't know. Very, very little. Buy comics you like. Anyway, I, 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 I don't know. Thanks for listening.